media and crisis PR lawyer Jonathan Code, who was actually recently asked to act for Matt Hancock. Thank you for joining me. Yes, I have to say that's disappointing because I made it absolutely clear to your programme. I asked them not to disclose that. And that is very, very poor journalism. OK, well, it seems like, uh, I mean, are you OK to carry on or is that the kind of thing that means you don't want to carry on? No, I'm apologize it doesn't mean that I, the... I'll go around because I, I disagree with what a lot of you say. But you've, you've stood there in front of a, a baying audience throwing poo left, right and centre at Man, Matt Hancock when your own television station has engaged in correspondence with me where I explained... That, that one, you know, I'm in a position to be able to comment on this and mention that I'd been approached by Matt Hancock. I asked you not okay. to mention that. Well, and I apologize you that we've... So I apologise that we might speak to you. No, you haven't answered the question. Do you think that's right? Yes, in the specific example I'm about to say. No, you do. Okay. Think. Well, then, um, God, God help you. If you really think that obligations of confidence are worth that little, I don't believe you. I so don't think I you believe this, that's is right there at any all. Case, is there any case? You, I've just been given the actual email that you sent to my producer, which they'd like me to read out, um, as a courtesy to the lady who approached me to act for MH, Matt Hancock, I would be grateful if it was mentioned that he asked me to act for him. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it seems that you actually... That you're absolutely right that it's my mistake I missed out the knot. I take all of that back. My abs... abs my abject apologies. You're right and I'm wrong. How good was that, people? Well, it must be said that it's been reported that a spokesperson for Matt Hancock has said the former health secretary has never spoken to or met Jonathan Code. I'm delighted to say I am joined by Steve and Alan. Steve, you wonderful man. Firstly, well done yesterday with handling all of that. But I wanted to get a little bit of behind the scenes info on this because it's been seen about a million times, more than a million times on at GB News at Twitter. Steve, for a second, the world must have fallen out of your backside there. <laughs> yeah, I've got certain muscles that I didn't know I have that are still not <laughs> unclenched. Um, you're right. As soon as it happened, I thought, oh, whoops, there's been a mistake. And the tone of that mistake, you know, if it was an honest mistake, I tried to apologise and didn't want to spend the full 10-minute interview being told how bad I was. I was like, OK, I'll apologise and let's move on and let's get to some meat of the dish. Um, so it was a few minutes until I got a note in my ear that said, we're getting the email now. And those words were like nectar because there's no way we were getting the email to make us look uh, worse. So it was a case of like, let's try and get this discussion on, but at some point I will have a Trump card to play. And it felt good, I'll be honest. So were you letting him run quite a bit, getting progressively more and more angry, knowing in the back of your mind that you were about to absolutely sting him? Well, not really, because I think the, the sting ends up being off topic. But that was the problem. He wouldn't get on topic. Not that I'm, I'm not here to do a pile on, but I would have preferred to have a discussion with a person who knows way more about law than I do about confidentiality, non-disclosures and the issue of public interest. But I just couldn't get on to that. So I was trying to have a proper discussion on that, which for some reason he seems to be very angry at me. I'm not, not sure what I did. Um, but then it was nice to know that the, the end of it might include an email that uh, somewhat saved us. The thing about having a live audience on that show is that, you know, it can go either way. But yeah. I think their response was exactly what helped. I think that that was the thing that made me feel a bit more comfortable. As soon as that laugh happened, I realized maybe I still have a career. Yes, it, well, you definitely do have a career. And can I just say, Steve, look, I've been in similar risk situations than that, and it will be no surprise to anyone I've handled them nowhere near as well as you did. So congratulations, Steve. And look, uh, yeah, you've got a viral clip out of it, to say the least. But yes, that's Steve and Alan there. Thank you. Thank you very much. He 